Hello and welcome to another video. Today we will be learning about transformations of functions. Let's start with some basic transformations that just change the location of the graph. The first one is going to be a vertical shift, also known as a vertical translation. You can see them right here. You're going to have f of x and then add a number or subtract a number. Those are pretty easy to see. For example, y equals x squared is my parent function for a quadratic. And if I want to graph y equals x squared plus 2, I'm going to take the quadratic and shift it up to units. I can focus on the vertex of my parabola. It started here at the origin, and then I'm going to move it up to units. So up. After that, I can recreate my whole graph by changing every single point in my parabola. Same thing will happen, for example, let's say I start with y equals absolute value of x. This is my parent function. If I want to graph y equals absolute value of x minus 2, again, all I have to do is take one point from the graph. I'm going to take the point of the origin, shift it or translate it down two units and create my new graph. Notice how the shape is exactly the same. All that is changing is the location. Similarly, we can do the same thing to shift or translate to the left and the right. But this one, we are going to put it inside of the parentheses or whatever operation we're performing. For example, y equals the square root of x versus y equals the square root of x plus 2. This will be my parent function square root function starting at the origin and the plus 2 as you can see has a kind of an opposite effect if you see a plus it will move to the left if you see a minus it will move towards the right so since this is plus 2 I am going to be moving towards the left two units and again I start my graph at that location Uh, if I want to move the opposite direction, then I would just put uh, x minus 2 inside, and then you will move towards the right. Reflection, we have two of them. One of them will be reflection across the x-axis, where the negative is on the outside. And then we have reflection over the y-axis, where the negative is inside. If you forget, you can use your calculator to figure out which one it is based on the square root function because on this one you can actually see both. For example, y equals negative square root of x. The blue one will be my parent or original function. If I reflect across the x-axis, which is this line, it's going to take this graph and reflect it across, giving you this one right here that I'm highlighting for you. Similarly, if I want to do y equals the square root of negative x. Again, I'm going to take my original graph and then reflect over the y-axis this time. So instead of pointing towards the right, it's going to be pointing towards the left. So this is my new graph with just this reflection being applied. We also have the one that changes the size of the graph, which has to do with um, stretching a graph or compressing a graph. Um, the first one is pretty easy to see. If you have an A or whatever number outside, it's going to vertically stretch it or vertically compress it depending on the value of A. So if A is greater than 1, then your function is going to be vertically stretched. If your A is less than 1, your function is going to be vertically compressed. I like to think of it as between 0 and 1, because remember, the negative has to do with reflection. So even if you do have a negative, you have to look at just the absolute value or the number by itself. And the second one is going to be a little bit more confusing, because you are going to have to look at the number that was given to you to determine if it's a stretch or a compression. And then when you're listing the factor, you are going to have to use the reciprocal of that number. For example, 
y equals the square root of 1 half x. First, we look at the 1 half. Since the 1 half is less than 1, we are actually going to have a horizontal stretch. When we're looking at the horizontal stretch by the factor, you are going to take the 1 half and then find the reciprocal of that number. In this case, the reciprocal 1 half, we are going to switch the numerator and the denominator because that's what the reciprocal is. So since my numerator was 1 and my denominator was 2, my numerator is going to become 2, my denominator is going to become 1. We simplify, we get the answer of 2. So when we are describing the transformation for this equation, we are going to say that we have a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. It's kind of backwards of what you see, similar to what the left and the right does. If it's inside, again, we are not going to use this number as a factor. We are going to use its reciprocal. The same thing happens for the compression. So now let's pick an equation like y equals uh, 2x quantity squared. Same thing, your number is 2. 2 is greater than 1, so we are going to have a graph that is horizontally compressed. To find the factor, we find the reciprocal of 2, which is the same as 2 over 1. Flip your numerator and denominator, make them change locations, and you get your factor to be 1 half. So again, when we're describing this transformation for this function, we are going to say that it was horizontally compressed by a factor of one half. Let's put this to practice and see how this is gonna be used in class. The first thing that we're going to do is we're going to uh, graph the following functions without the use of a calculator by using transformations. The first thing that I'm going to do is figure out what my parent function is I do have an x inside the parentheses, and I do have a um, squared outside. So my parent function is going to be y equals x squared, meaning it's a parabola. Again, the parent function starts right at the origin. After that, I'm going to make a quick list of the transformations that were applied to the parent function, and then I'm going to sketch the graph of that function that was given to me. I am going to be color coding. So the first transformation that I see listed, I see an x plus 1 quantity squared. Remember the plus 1 inside the parentheses is going to be a translation that's going to move horizontally. So I'm going to say horizontal translation to the left by 1 unit. The second transformation is going to be given to you by this minus 3 outside. Again, since it's outside, it's going to move either up if it's positive or down if it's negative. So I'm going to say I have a vertical shift. Remember the word shift and translation mean the same thing. But this time I'm going to be moving down 3 units. So when I sketch my graph, I take this point at the origin, and then I'm going to move uh, to the left one unit. Now I'm here, and then I'm going to move three down. So my new vertex of my parabola will be at a negative one, negative three. So I'm going to start by drawing my vertex, and then I'm going to create a sketch of my parabola. If I want to find the domain very quickly, I see an arrow pointing to the left. So I know I'm going to start negative infinity. I continue going all the way to positive infinity. So negative infinity to positive infinity is my domain. For my range coming from the bottom, the first number that I hit is going to be negative 3. Since I have a solid line, negative 3 has to be included in my range. So I open with the bracket and then go all the way to infinity. 
let's practice again with this problem. What I'm going to do is I'm going to move this 2 to the end and rewrite it as plus 2. I'm used to seeing the vertical shift or translation at the end. That's why I'm moving it. You do get the same answer, but when I do it, I like to do it from left to right just to make it easier for me. So looking at this, I can see that I have one transformation here with the negative. I have another transformation here with the negative one. And then I have another transformation here with the plus two. So three transformations total. The negative, like I said before, is going to be a reflection. If it's outside, it's going to be a reflection across the x-axis. The next transformation that I see is the minus one, which is going to be a horizontal translation uh, to the right by one unit. The next transformation that I see is going to be uh, this one the plus two on the outside, which is going to be a vertical translation up by two units. So looking at my parent function, this is going to be the square root function that is going to look similar to this. I'm going to apply the transformations in order as I listed them. So when I uh, reflect across the x-axis, going to look like this red line, this red graph right here. So now it's going to be uh, pointing down. Now I'm going to move to the right one unit. So again, the parent function starts at the origin. So I'm going to go one unit to the right, and then I'm going to go three units up. So this will be the new beginning of my graph. Again, one to the right, three up. I can start right here. And since I reflect that, now I'm going to go down and to the right, creating the graph of the equation that was given to me. Again, I'm going to be practicing domino range coming from the left towards the right. This is the first point that I hint, which is positive 1. Again, it is included because it's a solid dot. As I, um, draw my graph and then it goes all the way to infinity because I do have a line that continues all the way to the right side. My range I come from the bottom you can see the arrow pointing down. The highest point that I get to is 3 and that's where my range starts so my range is going to be negative infinity to positive 3. Okay, so now let's uh, pay a little bit more close attention to the stretch and the compression. The way that I like to visually show it is by using the sine function, because on this function you can really see the difference between the two. So looking at the first part, we are going to be looking at the vertical stretch, and then we're going to graph them simultaneously so that we can see the difference between them. So first it's telling us to look at the sine function. So I'm going to go to my calculator. Make sure your calculator is in radians so you can see the graph better. I'm going to graph sine of x. Press enter. As you can see, you can see the curves, right? It's going to go up. It's going to come back down. Uh, this is the original. First thing that I want you to see is going to be the vertical stretch. So in order for you to have a vertical stretch, remember you need to have a number bigger than 1 outside of your function. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new function on the same grid, so that way I can see and compare and see what happens to my graph. So again, 2 sine of x, enter. As you can see, your graph got uh, expanded uh, vertically or stretched out. I'm going to take a picture of this very quickly and go back to my presentation.
presentation so that way I can talk and point stuff out for you. So just hold on. I'm just going to paste it right on top. So again, the blue one is going to be your original. The other one is going to be the one that got vertically stretched. As you can see, the highest value on the blue one throughout the whole graph is going to be positive one. The smallest value on the blue graph is going to be negative one. As you can see, your values got stretched out. It's easier to see at that point where it's double the distance where it used to be. So before this used to be one on the blue one, when you stretch it out, it doubled to two. It will happen the same thing if you change it to three or if you change it to four, then it will expand or get stretched out to whatever number you do from both directions, the positive and the negative. It's also important to note that none of the x-intercepts changed because again, the distance between the x-axis and the x-intercept is zero. So even if you multiply by a large number, your answer will always be zero. So the width of your uh, waves did not change. It's going to be the same throughout the whole thing, no matter what uh, number you put. Similarly, if we change that to, uh, to a smaller number, like one half, it will have an effect on the graph where you can see the opposite of what the other one did. So now in this case, as you can see, the graph got closer to the x-axis or compressed. And I'm going to just point out a few things on my document over here. you can see that now your uh, values got compressed or closer together. So the blue one is the original, you went up to one, now you're going half the distance. And that happens for every single point on your graph. Again, except the x-intercepts because the distance is zero. We can see the difference uh, between the two graphs if you put them next to each other. So now let's look at the horizontal stretch and see if we see any differences between them. So again, I'm going to start by looking at my original sine of x. The first thing that I want y'all to look at is going to be the horizontal stretch. Let's go back to my graph. Again, I'm going to go from sine to 0.5 or a half sine x. Make a screenshot very quickly. And then I'm going to add it to my presentation. So I can point out a few things and we can look at the difference between them. So again, as you can see on the top one, the distance between the graph and the x-axis changed. This one is going to be the opposite. It's going to change the distance between the points and the y-axis. So as you can see here, the x-intercepts are not the same throughout the whole thing. It just happened every other point, meaning that the distance between the y-axis and your uh, x-intercept doubled. So before it was here, this is 1. The next one is the distance got twice as large or two times because that was R factor, right? R factor is the reciprocal of one half. The reciprocal of one half is two, meaning the distance doubled for every single point in my graph. Similarly, if I look at the compression and I look at sine of two uh, X, I should be able to see the opposite and see a 
compression, meaning that the number of x-intercepts double because the distance is now half of what it used to be, as you can see on the graph. So now let's practice doing an example where we have a vertical stretch or compression in our problem because as you can see we have the six on the outside again i'm going to do the same thing that i've been doing i'm going to move the plus three to the right side and then i'm going to go from left towards the right i am going to be color coding them i have this first one which is just my negative which is going to create a reflection across the x-axis because it's on the outside next one is going to be this uh, minus two which is going to be a horizontal i'm going to use the word shift because i've been using translation again they mean the same thing i have a horizontal shift to the right by two units again it's inside so it's the opposite of the sign that we see next one and last one i'm going to have a plus three so the plus three is going to be a vertical translation going up by three units and i'm done listing the provide listing the verbal descriptions for the transformations again if you go in order from left to right then you're uh, going to get the right answer so let's uh, practice a little bit more and focus a little bit more on the horizontal stretch or translation the first thing that i see on this one i'm going to actually be rewriting it so i can get the right answer because if you see here it has an eight but actually my graph when i look at it is not going to be moving eight units this number right here in front is going to make have an impact on how many units it moves so i'm going to say g of x is equal to negative three that's fine but when i do my square root inside i'm going to put a negative two in the front i'm meaning i'm going to be factoring a negative two from everything and i do this i'm going to list my x first so remember when you factor out on the greatest common factor all you have to do is divide both numbers by the factor that you factor out to the front so in this case negative 2 divided by negative 2 is just going to give me an x and then 8 divided by negative 2 is going to give me a negative 4 with a plus 6 on the outside so i'm going to start listing my transformations in order coming from left to right the first negative is going to reflect across the x-axis uh, inside I have another negative which is going to make it reflect across the y-axis this time the two Remember, I'm looking at the reciprocal of two, so it's one half. It's going to be my factor, so it's going to be a horizontal compression. By a factor of one half. The next one, it's minus four, is going to be actually moving or horizontally shifting to the right four units and then the last one is going to be a vertical translation up by again like i said this number will have an impact on the this number will have an impact on the eight 
So if you were to graph it, you can actually see the graphs that it only moves for units. You can do that on your own and look at the graph and see if the transformations that we listed match to what you have. We are going to be doing the same thing on the next on the problem right next to it. Again, I'm going to start by rewriting it. So k of x equals one half log. Again, I'm going to write the one half first, and then I'm going to do this, uh, dividing by the thing that I'm going to be factoring to the front. One half divided by one half will give me an x. When I do the 10, remember I'm dividing by a fraction. When I divide my, by a fraction, it's the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. So 10 times 2 will give me actually 20. So it's actually going to be moving 20 units, not 5. Keep that in mind. I'm going to write my transformations in order. Negative 1 half of the front is going to give me a vertical stretch by a factor of 1 half. The next one is a 1 half inside. So it's actually going to be a horizontal stretch by a factor of 2. And then the 20 is going to be moved to be a horizontal Translation to the left, 20 units, and then I forgot to write the minus 4 on the outside, but that's going to be a vertical translation up, sorry, down. Four units. I forgot it was a negative. So that's going to be all my uh, transformations listed. The bottom part, they gave you F and G, and they're asking you to perform one of the transformations that was given to you. The first one is going to be really easy. We're just taking F and then doing a vertically vertical stretch by a factor of three. If you remember from your first page of equation that's going to be a number or times f of x is what you use. So basically I know that my factor is 3 and then I'm going to multiply by whatever f of x is. In this case it's 3x, I mean x cubed minus 16x and then I just uh, distribute and simplify to make it look better. So don't forget to distribute your 3 to both of the terms. So in this case, it will be 3 times x cubed, which will give me 3x cubed. 3 times uh, 16x, which is going to give me 48. And then don't forget the negative, so negative 48x. That's going to be my final answer. If I want to do a horizontal shrink by a factor of 1 half, don't forget, I'm going to put in the reciprocal inside, so I'm actually going to be substituting with 2's. So again, take f of x and replace every x with 2x. So it's going to be 2x quantity cubed, because I'm replacing this x with 2x. Then, next, I'm going to do minus... 16 times 2x, and then I'm going to simplify. When you do this cube, you have to apply it to both. So 2 to the third, it will give me 8. And then x to the third will give me x cubed. When I do six, negative 16 times 2x, it will give me negative 32x. And that's going to be my answer. The reflection, again, just has to do with the negatives. 
So if you're reflecting across the x-axis, your negative should be on the outside. So I'm just going to do negative times g of x, which is 5x minus 9 over x squared plus 3. This could be your answer. If you want to distribute to make it nicer, you can distribute the negative to only the numerator and rewrite it as negative 5x plus 9 over x squared plus 3, and you are done. For the reflection across the y-axis, you are uh, doing it backwards, so you're going to replace all your x's with negative x because of the equation that we learned at the beginning. So again, I'm going to take the equation for g, which is 5x minus 9, but instead of 5x, I'm going to write negative 5 times negative x minus 9 over negative x squared plus 3. Uh, I'm going to simplify. 5 times negative x will give me negative 5x minus 9. I'm just rewriting it. Negative x times negative x will give me positive x squared plus the 3. And that's my final answer. So again, um, some basic information. On this part, we're going to describe the transformation that happened from graph F to go to graph G. This one, I am going to be color coding it again. I have the negative, that's my first one. So the negative will give me a reflection across the x-axis because it's outside the 3 again outside will give me a vertical stretch by a factor of 3 last one the easiest is outside so it's going to be a vertical shift down one unit and we are done the next one we only have two transformations we have the three on the outside which will give me a vertical stretch by a factor of three and then again then plus one inside will be a horizontal. This is horizontal. It's going to be opposite of the sign that you see. So since you see a plus, it's going to be a translation to the left. Uh, the last two questions, you're doing it backwards. They gave you an equation, and they're asking you to apply the transformations that they gave you. So on this one, I'm going to start with the parent function, which is y equals x squared. And then I want to expand vertically by a factor of 3. If it's vertically, I am going to put it on the outside. So my new equation will be y equals 3x squared. For the second one, I take the equation that I just got and then translate it down three units. So all I have to do is put a minus three on the outside and I'm done. For the next one, uh, I am applying two transformations to this equation as well. So I start with this one. Again, I want to compress uh, horizontally by a factor of two. So when I write my equation, I am going to rewrite it as y equals uh, 2x. And then when I do the next one, I'm going to be translating it to the left three units. So I take my equation and then I replace whatever x is with x plus 3. And then I'm done. Uh, thank you for watching, and hopefully you learned something new today. Uh, don't forget to follow and subscribe. Have a great day.